fall is so pretty here. Have some raking to do. Yeah, I love that red tree. It's beautiful. Let's talk about a real Halloween story. This summer I traveled states to visit my son. I always stay a few days and this time I was having an exciting summer. I was sleeping downstairs and my kitty cat Louise was with me. One night I was settled into bed watching things on my laptop. The kitty cat was on the bed. And it was dark except for the light of my computer. As I was getting sleepy, I was startled by a <sighs> fluttering that brushed past my cheek. I opened my eyes and looked, and I saw a bat lying next to me. It was lifting its wings and opening its mouth like a tiny vampire. I screamed. The kitty leaped into the air and I grabbed her on my way out of the room and slammed the door behind me. Let's turn a little heat on. And there's our next project. Way in there. So let's go see. Pain in the neck. I ran upstairs as fast as I could to tell my son. He did occasionally have bats in the house early on, but it's been about five years now. Nothing since then until now. He and his dad came down. They found the bat and they removed it. But the kitty and I slept in the living room downstairs with the door shut. Scary, filthy. Needs a shelf. Found a hidden door. That's kind of cool. Someone evidently took the top off. Crazy, huh? So I actually bought a piece of plywood. I think this is just some kind of rubberish material.
But um, I have an idea. I actually have an idea. Um, see, they have these trims right here. I think. I'm not going to take the trims off. But I am going to redecorate it and use this. Maybe. Or maybe I'll cut the plywood and set it behind my trims. Um, isn't it funny? Like the back of it looks cleaner than anything. It's so weird. This hole, I don't know, it must have been for electronics or something. And it has the, um, the serpentine front. Absolutely filthy. So let's clean it up. Just to get a better look at it. And of course I said yes. Everything he thought of was such a great idea. And so you can imagine what happened next because, dude, the water in a waterfall doesn't stop. You can't just paddle up to it. <laughs> so down we went. <laughs> and we live to tell about it. And anyway, the great idea that my ex had today about finding holes in the chimney, I thought that sounded good. So he got up on the ladder and um, we mixed mortar and I just basically stood there and pointed out holes and he filled all the holes. This was during the day when bats are sleeping. Okay, so, yeah, there's a couple different screws in the lock, and then you can see that the lock is all chewed apart, so I'm going to have to fix that. Um, this is broken right here, and nicked at the top. A lot of these, I, I'm just going to use like a quick wood. Um, only because this thing is in really poor condition and yeah um, I'm going to make it in a lot better condition when I'm done but uh, I know it has veneer on it really thick veneer too neat actually kind of kind of nice not sure if you can see that so I took the lock out and I put some oil in it and I'll clean it. I have some screws underneath here. I just have them soaking in some WD-40. And I kept these screws different because those appear to be the only original ones um, and the best fitting. So I'm going to have to try to put my hands on some that are that size. The hinges and the knobs, the hardware is um, just soaking in some vinegar. And I will, oh, my, my phone must have did, done something funny. Um, yeah, that's where the lock goes. And it needs a little bit of love. This is where that's broken. Um, I have a piece of plywood that I marked up to cut and put a new shelf in so we'll do that I have, i'm going to try to put my hands on one of the um, power saws instead of using a handsaw so um yeah not today but at least i'm ready to do it oh here's another spot that needs to be filled with the quick wood just so that i can build this up yep that will get glued yep and then I'll put some, I'll actually trim it off with some wood bend. Yeah. So, yeah, I did it, I cleaned it with Zep. It took me quite a while to clean it. I would say about an hour. I cleaned it with a Zep. 
um, antibacterial, and that's actually a non-rinse formula, um, but I do rinse it. I had to rinse it because it was so dirty. And then I went over it with some bleach, and that was just so that I could kill any mildew or mold that was lurking. So, so yeah, let's uh, work on gluing a couple of pieces down, and we'll start there. Yeah. So it's freezing in here, and I have a heater on, but I'm just not warm. It's raw and cold out. It's not raining. It's just it's nasty. Let's remove these. Hard to do things one hand. So I'm going to remove those. And so I did a lot of work off camera just because I didn't, there's a lot of repairs on this. And the last couple of um, videos that I did um, were full of repairs, and you're probably sick of repairs. Um, and if you're not, I can link a few uh, so that you can. I watched some of those repairs, but right here I created a drawer that was missing and um, I didn't have a piece of wood long enough so I glued two pieces together and it's it's gluing up right now. Um, I also sanded down this door. <laughs> Look how terrible that looks. This poor little door. <laughs> and I filled it with um, the quick wood and I used a, a chisel to chisel it down and then I did a lot of it with a wood filler, a wood putty afterwards and so that's a drying um this top i'm gonna paint this top um, and it just has a lot of dings in it i'm sure i missed a few i can already see um, but i'll go back and fill them i'm gonna do a coat of um i'm gonna see if i have um some primer because the only primer i have is a really small jar of dixie bell boss and i just don't have enough in it um so i can either put some chalk paint in that can to get a little bit more bulk out of it and use a shellac spray, which is what I have here, once everything is dry. Because um, this is a real bleeder and you can see the wood there is probably mahogany, um, the veneer, and um, so I'm going to have to put some kind of primer on it before I paint. Uh, I mean, unless I do an oil-based primer, it's just that they take so long to dry before you put a water base on them, and I, I really hate to take that much time. And I don't have anywhere around here that sells Dixie Belle, um, which is really fast drying. But if I can gather up some water-based primer at home and bring it over so that I can use that as well as the Dixie Belle, then I'll be all set with that. So, yeah, really terrible. Terrible, terrible. So we'll keep going on this. Oh, my hand hurts. Okay. 
So after sanding, and I put a couple sprays of shellac outside, and now I'm putting on a primer. Um, it's a Zinsurf primer. It is a water-based primer, uh, but it's really good. It, it's actually mildew resistant. I didn't do that on purpose, but it was the one that I had in the house, so that's what I used. So one coat of primer, um, that's actually the little um, shelf that I made. And there's the piece obviously like really bleeding through a lot. Um, and I have some other pieces to um, spots, holes to fill on the top. Uh, and I'm just, I'm doing a lot of this off camera just because it's boring and tedious and there's nothing exciting about seeing it. But I just want to catch you up to what I've been doing. So I filled a lot of holes, but um, as you can see, once you get uh, a coat of paint on, whether it's primer or not, then you can really see um, what you need to do as far as filling. Now I'm not worried about these edges because I'm covering it with a woody bend, and I'll show you that. So this uh, woody bend is the one that I'm going to be using. It has a, like a Greek key design on it, and it's not too thick, so... I'm going to have to see how that goes. Yeah. We shall see. But that's going to go around. I have another wood you bend here, but um, it's very, very small. So the profile is way too slim to be able to fit where I want it to fit. And this is the other one that I have. So that's the one that I'm going to use. I have one coat of white primer that I put on. And um, because I'm using a dark paint, I'm going to mix a little bit of black paint in with, uh, with my primer. Except for the front door, which is getting the decoupage, that has two coats of white primer because I'm going to put white paint as a base. So let's try a little bit of the black. Okay. I'm tearing off the edges of my decoupage with a little bit of water on the edge so that it doesn't have a sharp edge on the front of my cabinet. Just a little bit of water and a little bit of a tear. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Okay, I have to do a really quick video because my phone is out of storage and I have to keep erasing things. So I'm not going to show the entire decoupage, but um, I have my decoupage medium and I'll list all the products uh, under the video. And I'm just going to start this decoupage. I like to start it because it gives me a chance to change it. Just I have to just lift a little instead of lifting a lot if I want to um, change position. So I'm going to shut this off now and hopefully have enough for the rest of my video. So I have some of my palette here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Merlot, a red that I got. There was a mist tint in the mustard and coffee bean truffle and a Benjamin Moore brown. 
So, uh, you know, I'm going to try to paint this. I'm not sure how much um, storage I have, so hopefully my phone will last a little bit. I have several brushes, but I'm just going to kind of dip and mix at the same time. Um, here I have mixed two colors on my brush, and I'm going to start, uh, I'll start over here. And then I'm gonna go for a trying to find a place to put my brush. A red. So I'll do I'll do a red, yellow, and a purple together. Now these aren't really blending, obviously. Uh, what I'm trying to do is create a background for the artwork. And I'm going to go back to the browns a little bit. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. When the red and yellow mixes together near the border, it kind of picks up the the orange in those flowers. Yep. So I kind of like that. I'm going to bring my colors up here. I haven't done the top of the cabinet yet. That's why I'm safe in um, kind of being a little reckless with it. And sometimes I can just get in there with my fingers and that way I kind of place that color near the border where I want it. Go with Merlot and a little bit of the coffee bean here. I'm just going to take a little bit of a different brown here. That's this Benjamin Moore brown. So it's kind of a... So we'll add a little bit of that. I like how it kind of brings it in. It um, almost look, looks like a few dead leaves or the color of um, dead leaves. I'm going to have to lift the bottom in order to get there. But so right here you know, I'm going to go with brown. I'm going to go with brown and a brown and a red. So let's do this truffle. And a little bit of the Merlot. I want to get my tassel there. Okay. So yeah, that's really cool. That's cool. It's looking like I like. I'm going to go a little bit back to brown here in red. 
uh, dark brown. I should say it's coffee bean. So it's a very dark brown. I'm going to make a little room for myself. Yeah. So I'm going to have to move these brushes. And I've got the brown. Let me try the truffle. I'm sorry, the red and the Merlot. And a little bit of the Benjamin Moore brown. And I'm just going to try to lift. I'm holding it with my fingers there. A little redder on this side. I'm going to do another coffee bean and red, actually. And I'm going to mix those together. I like that. It's like it can't go wrong, you know? Oh, I don't want to lose this. I'm going to do just a little bit of a vignette in the bottom. So that's not too bad <clears throat> to get it started. And I'm going to let it dry, and then I'll go around for a second coat. But let's take a little better look here. So yeah, not too bad. So I'm going to let that dry, because I like the stippling part of it. So I don't want to change that. I really don't want to blend it, per se. So I want to let that dry, and then I'll go back, and I'll, I'll do it again, a second coat, lightly. No, don't be afraid. <laughs> That's what the other side looks like. That's a base coat, and our colors will be going over that, and the colors will be metallic. Second coat is drying. So, this is the second stencil that I'm using by, um, I just got them from House of Mendes, that's Jonathan Mark Mendes, and he's working with Annie Sloan, and they created some new stencils, and so I couldn't wait to use them, and I used one on the new, uh, the new shelf, and now this is the inside of the drawer, and I'm using, um, Rust-Oleum metallic paint, it's called, um, Champagne and it's, it's a favorite of mine. I did add some adhesive to the back, and um, spray adhesive. So these are really large stencils, and they can hold quite a bit of paint. And here is the would you bend piece pieces that I'm going to use and yeah I think I've built up the edges enough and it's wide enough to cover the old trim and uh, I glued down the top again it was kind of popping up and loose in some spaces so I glued and clamped it and this trim should should actually overlap onto the tabletop which is good that's exactly what I want um, I wish it was a little bit more of a top profile, <laughs> but it's okay. So that's the next thing I'm going to do while my stencils are drying. 
um, and my second coat is drying on the door front. Um, I'm going to cut and glue this would you bend trim. And so I've heated and bent the front, the serpentine part of it, blow dryer. Um, it it's too, makes the video too long to show it, um, but I do have other video that shows uh, more in depth um, working with the woody bend trim and how to um, heat it up and then form it. And now it's cool. So I heated it, formed it little by little, all the way across. Now it's cool for the most part. And so it's going to maintain that shape. And I'm going to use a tight bond, click and thick, to apply it because this will work with uh, different types of material. So this is some kind of laminate that I painted. And then there's the wooden trim and the wood you bend. So I want all of those to adhere without any problems. And so that's why the tight bond is what I'm going to use. So um, I'll catch up in a few minutes. OK. Um, so what I did was I have um, a precious pearl sealer from Pure Eco. Uh, very expensive for me to order because you have to pay for shipping from Australia. And what I did was I took three metallics. Um, Modern Masters, sorry, um, let's see, it is Copper Penny Metallic Paint. Um, I have a, a blush chrome, just a bit of it, and that's a, um, it's a redesign, sorry, hard to hold my phone and do this at the same time. Um, I also have the Modern Masters uh, Black Pearl and English Brown opaque and so I mixed each color with the pearl sealer and I'm going to top coat it with a blend of these colors So as you can imagine, without a place for the bats to get out of the chimney, they started coming out into the house. Over the next several days, the three of us let out, uh, my son counted 22 bats. And we ended up all having to be treated for rabies, of course. And, but the good news is, thanks to Boo's wonderful, fantastical, horrible, good idea, my son has no more bats. Happy Halloween.
Thank you so much for watching the Halloween challenge hosted by Meg at Lovely Doubly Furniture. Please check out her channel listed here and make sure to watch all the other YouTube participants to see their awesome work.